The darkness seemed to extend forever as my consciousness floated for what could have been an eternity. Finally, the darkness faded, and I was hit with a myriad new sensation. The grind of gears, the explosive push as pistons fired, the twist of screws, the stretch of springs, and the hardness of the inflexible plating covering me. The sensations were alien, but I still felt utter joy at existing and being able to feel once more. I tried to take a deep breath, only to realize I couldn't. I mentally panicked as my mind assumed that I was suffocating, but then I realized that I didn't have any sensations of pain associated with suffocation, and that I was actually okay. It took a moment to adjust, and then I remembered a characteristic of the metal man species. They didn't breathe. As the dark faded, a light in the distance grew slowly brighter and brighter until it filled my vision. There was a cacophony of voices, and while none were quite in focus yet, I recognized the blurry shapes of people moving all around me along with tables, chairs, walls, and a window in the background. I wished that I could see better, and like magic, words appeared in front of me. Readjusting visual centers. There was a small whirring noise inside my head, and the room came into focus. The people talking were wearing white lab coats and excitedly gesturing toward me. I was confused as I realized just how short the people were. They only came up to my waist and had heads that were just a bit too large for their bodies, with larger than healthy ears and bulbous noses. The word gnomes floated to mind, and I realized that was exactly what they were. Their speech seemed like some foreign language at first, but their words slowly started to make sense, and I realized that I somehow recognized it. A gnome with bright red hair and a handlebar mustache gestured toward me. See, I told you that it would work. Instead of creating a new artificial soul, the ancients must have bound an old one to their machines to make the metal men. Yes, yes, your technique has worked, but just because it lives doesn't mean it is the same techniques the ancients used. Another gnome, one with black, slicked-back hair, countered. A third gnome, just out of sight, said, we haven't even tested the metal man to see if it's sentient. It may be as unintelligent as all the normal constructs. The only female among them sighed tiredly and then spoke up loudly to interrupt their conversation. Look, I've done my part summoning the soul. Can I go now? The others barely registered the question before waving the short woman away. She quickly moved toward the door, a brief flash of curiosity appearing across her face as she glanced back at me before she turned away and left. I tried to speak, but found that I couldn't. I could only turn my head left and right and move my fingers and toes, but that didn't mean that I was without my wiles. I tapped on the metal table with my finger. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. The steady sound caught the gnome's attention. Their arguing stopped, and they looked at me. Can you understand us? Tap. I think he just said yes, the redhead said to the other gnomes. No, Tanomi. It's likely just some random movement. I still think our research should shift back to artificial souls, the gnome with the slicked back hair said. Tap, tap. Ha! He just told you no, Nomarad. The other gnomes smiled at each other and started to fire off questions while the black-haired one sulked silently. It took a while but through a series of yes or no questions, I was able to clarify that I could understand them, but that something was wrong with my voice. The redhead, Tonomi, grabbed a tool from the workbench behind me and adjusted something in my neck by using a ladder to reach me. There was a crackling sound and an ear-splitting whine, then another adjustment to something in my neck and a quiet, low hum. Okay, now try to speak, friend, Tonomi said. Hello, world. I said with a deep, synthetic voice. A small chuckle escaped my, well, not lips, but voice box. I thought the phrase would be appropriate since it was the first thing most programmers learned to code.